Hi everyone, welcome to another Yarn Scrap Friday and I was feeling a little bit spring, spring-like this week so I thought I would show you how to make my tulips and the leaf as well. And this is quite an old pattern I designed a few years ago now, um, which was originally on Ravelry, still is. Um, but there's a updated written version to this pattern on my website, I'll put a link in the description below to the written version. Um, but in this tutorial, again, I've adapted it, I've updated um, a better way of doing the stems to make them a little bit thicker. Because in my original pattern, I just left it as a single wire and it didn't look so good. So I developed a different technique for doing the stem. So I hope you like these tulips. And we're going to be using some DK light worsted weight yarn. That's a yarn weight of three. And I've chosen a pink for these tulips. I think my original ones were yellow. Um, but you can use any colour that you like for the tulip. You can do blue, purple, red, whatever you fancy. And also some DK light worsted weight green yarn as well for the... I'm going to be using it in the stem, but for mainly for the leaf. Okay, so we're also going to be using a 3.5mm E crochet hook. So you need one of those and you're going to need a pair of scissors and a yarn needle for doing some sewing or well, sewing in some ends and you're also going to need some toy stuffing for the tulip itself um, but you can use yarn scraps instead if you prefer. Now what you will need in addition to this pattern is some florist wires. This is like green forest wire. It's fairly, fairly, fairly easy to bend um, you can pick this up from your local flor florist. I think I got this from my local florist. Um, but you might be able to get it from um, a hardware store, local hardware DIY store as well. So that's florist wire. And you're also going to need some florist tape. Okay, And I got this from my local florist as well. You might be able to get this in a local DIY store. Otherwise you should be able to get it on Amazon or eBay or something like that. So that's florist tape as well. It's kind of like this weird stuff where it's not sticky. You think, oh, it's not sticky, but when it works onto itself, it goes sticky. So you'll, sure, you'll see how that works. Okay, so let's begin. And we're going to begin with the tulip first. <laughs> Okay, so to make the tulip, we're going to take our tulip colour to begin and our 3.5mm E crochet hook and we're going to chain four. Okay, so we're going to chain four. So we do our little slip knot and then we chain four. So one, two, three and four. Okay, so we chain four to begin. And what you want to do is find your first chain and just put your hook into that first chain, bring the yarn through that first chain and then bring it straight through the loop on your hook. And that joins your four chains into a little loop joined at the beginning and the end and in the middle you should be able to see a little hole. And don't confuse it with the chain one find that little hole in the middle, there we go, there he is, and we want to put our hook into that centre hole and ignoring how many chains you've got now, it doesn't matter how many chains you've got, we're going to work 10 single crochet and this pattern's in US terminology, so you want 10 single crochet, so there's one, then we go back into the centre again do another single crochet, just wrapping it around the chains. Two. So you want ten of these. Two. Go back into the centre. Do another one. Three. Four. the centre, five, back into the centre, six, seven, eight, 
eight. And as you get towards the end, you may have to just move your stitches over so you can fit the last couple in. If you really struggle, you can start off with five chains instead of four, um, which will give you a slightly bigger loop. Nine and the last one, ten. Okay, so you want ten single crochet into that loop. Two, four, six, eight, nine, and ten. And finding that first single crochet that you did, you want to put your hook into that single crochet, going under both bits of yarn, and do a slip stitch. So bring the yarn through that single crochet then straight through the loop on your hook. And that does a little slip stitch. And then you can just pull your tail end and it brings in that hole a little bit. Just a little bit. We don't need to worry too much about that being too small because we're going to thread a lot of stuff for it at the end. Okay, so moving on to round two, what we're going to do, we're just going to do a chain one. Now you don't need to worry about making that too big because we're going to ignore that as a stitch, that little chain one. And what we want to do is we want to put our hook back into that same first single crochet that we did. So go back into that same one that we slip stitched into. And in there we're going to do two single crochet. So we do one single crochet. Let me go back into there again, same one, and do another single crochet. Okay, so you've got, ignoring the chain one as a stitch, we've got two single crochet. And you want to do two single crochet in each stitch around, so go into the next stitch and do two single crochet, one and another one in the same stitch, two and then two in the next one, so do two single crochet in each stitch around, one and back in there again for two, until you've doubled up and your stitch count equals 20, okay, to go from 10 to 20. Uh, I've done two in there, two in the next one, one and another one in the same stitch. So just repeat that round, doing two single crochet in each stitch around back to the beginning. And when you get back to the beginning, you can just, if you're not sure if you got to the end, you can just count 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So we know we've got to do two more, and there's that last stitch there. One, and another one in the same stitch. By the end of that round you should have 20 stitches and what you want to do is that isn't a stitch that's what I call the little fake stitch and ignoring the chain one which is pretty much disappeared now you want to find that first single crochet it's so finding that first single crochet that you did I'm going to put our hook through there it's gone a bit tight into that first single crochet bring the yarn through the single crochet and straight through the loop on your hook to do a slip stitch to join the round. Okay, So by the end of that round you should have a stitch count of 20. What we're going to do now is the same thing again, we'll do a little chain one which we're going to ignore as a stitch, that's just going to disappear. Then going back into that, I've just slightly missed that bit of yarn there, but going back into that first single crochet that you did on the second round, the one you slip stitched into, we want to do one single crochet. Just one single crochet in that same stitch you just slip stitched into. Then in the next stitch we want to do two single crochet. So in the next stitch we do two, one, and go back into the same stitch and do another one, two. Okay. Then in the next stitch we go back to doing one single crochet. So just one single crochet in the next stitch. Just the one. Then in the next stitch we do two single crochet. So two single crochet in the next stitch, one and another one in the same stitch. And you want to repeat that around, so the next stitch is one single crochet, next stitch two single crochet, 
then one single crochet, two single crochet, one single crochet, two single crochet, all the way back to the beginning. You should end on two single crochet and you should have a stitch count of 30. Okay, 30, not including that chain one. So one single crochet in the next stitch, then two single crochet in the next stitch. One and another one in the same stitch. Okay, so I'm going to do that and I shall come back. One single crochet and two single crochet. Let's go up to the last two. One single crochet and the very last one, two single crochet. So you should end up on two single crochet. Okay, and you should have a stitch count of 30. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. And ignoring that little bit there is what I call a fake stitch. Just above that is your chain one, which has pretty much disappeared. And what you want to do is find that first single crochet that you did and put your hook in there and do a little slip stitch to bring the yarn through there and straight through the loop on your hook to do a little slip stitch to join the round. So by the end of that round you should have a stitch count of 30. Okay. Then what we want to do is we want to move on to the next um, 13 rounds and the next 13 rounds are all the same. We do a little chain one and again ignore that as a stitch, it doesn't count and go back into the same stitch you just slip stitched into and do one single crochet just the one and we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch around so you're keeping a stitch count of 30 so we just go into the next stitch and do one single crochet next stitch one single crochet next stitch one single crochet next stitch and so on and so forth so you want to do one single crochet just the one in each stitch around, keeping a stitch count of 30 and then slip stitching into the first single crochet, so ignore the chain one, slip stitch into the first single crochet to join the round. And you want to do that for 13 rounds, okay, 13 rounds. And I'm just going to put this down and bring in one I made earlier. Here we go. So on this one I have repeated that, doing chain, chain one, ignore it as a stitch, one single crochet in the same stitch you slip stitched into, and do one single crochet in each stitch around, slip stitching in that first single crochet. And I've done that for 13 rounds, so in total, including your first three rounds, you have 16 rounds. So what you want to do then, when you've finished doing your 13 rounds, or just one single crochet in each stitch around, we just cut our yarn and leave enough for the sewing at the end and then we just pull the loop up like so. Okay. okay, so for the next stage we are going to work on the, the stem part. So what you want to do is to take your length of florist wire and these are about 30 centimeters long, it's about a ruler's length. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to, at one end, you can use jewellery making pliers for this if you want to, but we're basically just going to bend over the end to face in the opposite direction. So it's going to bend that over, so it's quite easy to bend. I'm going to bend it over in the opposite direction and then bend it round again, so it creates a little loop at the end. It's incredibly difficult to do with a camera in front. <laughs> basically going to bend that up to the top again. There we go. So it might be easier if you have jewellery making pliers, which I do have, but it's easier to do with my fingers on camera for now. So that creates a little loop like so. And then what we're going to do once we've done that is we're going to take our green yarn and you want about six lengths the same length as your wire. Okay, so get your green yarn and just measure, it doesn't have to be accurate, just measure a length, the same, roughly the same length as your 
stem and just cut it. Like I said, it doesn't have to be accurate. And then you can use this one as a template. And you want six of these, so then we're going to cut six of these. And I just use this one as a template then. Okay, so cut yourself six lengths like this. Okay, so when you've got your six lengths of green yarn, what you want to do is to take one end and find in the little loop that you made earlier, that I've made mine a little bit too small now, take a length and thread. I have, I've made my loop too small. Typical. <laughs> so I use my yarn needle. Just take one end of your green yarn and you want to just tie it onto the loop basically. It's just a little knot, just one knot. Just want to tie it onto the loop and then have the loop facing, uh, then have the yarn going downwards like that. And you want to do that for each piece of yarn. And if you've made your loop big enough, you won't have to use your yarn needle, which I don't normally use. But we're just going to thread each of these pieces of yarn onto our little loop and then tie them on. Okay. I'm going to do that for all six lengths of our green yarn. Okay, so I'll do that and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've done that for all six lengths of yarn. I've just tied them onto my little loop. And you can see it creates a really nice clump of yarn at the top around the loop. And that's great because that's going to catch on the inside of our tulips. The next thing to do is to thread your wire through the center of your tulip coming out through the bottom. And you want to sew all of these, you want to thread all of these through as well. So I do about three at a time. I just use my yarn needle. Three on there. Just sew those through the bottom as well. That bottom hole, all wants to come out that very bottom hole. Okay. Let's do that for the other three as well. this is going to create a really nice thick stem when we're finished and all these things will be hidden on the inside. Okay, so thread all your pieces of yarn through and down and you can see that that all catches on the inside. Just make sure you've got them all coming through. And when you've done that, what you want to do is you want to get a little bit of toy stuffing, just a little bit to begin separate that out and just bringing up the bring that back up slightly you want to get the stuffing underneath the wire which will stop it coming out even more so I'm just tucking that underneath all that bits of yarn all those bits of yarn on the other side as well and then you can just put it down a little bit and then we're going to finish stuffing our tulip. So I'm just putting a load more stuffing on top. Okay. I don't want to overstuff it, but so that'll do for now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to work on the stem. Let's get our pink tail end out the way. And what you want to do is now get some of your florist tape and you want to cut easier if it's cut I find about double the length of your stem so that's one length two and then sticking I'm going to stick this on so I need to figure out which way it sticks that's that direction we then just want to wrap it round our stem as close as you can get to the end of your tulip. It can be a little bit fiddly at first, but if you do end up with a slight gap, you can always come back and add tape afterwards. And 
and then it's just a case, making sure to keep the pink out of the way, just a case of wrapping everything in. So I'm just wrapping this round, making it quite tight, sort of pulling as I'm going, pushing down as well. Okay, so I'm just wrapping this round slightly diagonal so it goes downwards around the stem and around the pieces of green yarn as well. It gets easy once you've done it because then you can just twist it. Have to unravel your yarn a little bit as you go. So just keep doing that until you get to the end. Okay, so that's looking like that. Okay, so I've just finished that all the way to the end. Don't worry if you've got a little bit of wire left over. You can either leave that or just get some wire cutters and trim that off if you want to. But there we go. The great thing about adding wire is you can bend your flower and it keeps a shape. I tend to keep mine quite straight. You can use pipe cleaners as well if you want to, but I find this creates more of a natural look. So the next thing to do is we finish stuffing our um, tulip. And that forest tape always makes my hands a little bit sticky. <laughs> what we want to do is we want to thread on our tail end. And this creates the tulip shape. That is unique. And what you want to do is, the first thing to do is just going to sew onto the inside to begin, just sew onto the inside, and you want to go direct, um, literally, right across to the other side. It doesn't. You don't have to count any stitches. Just do it by eye, and go over to the other side and come out through that stitch. And this joins the tulip like this. And you want to secure that into place. So go through the stitches again. Just go to the other side as you can and come out the other side again and just keep doing that until it's secure just in the middle there okay so I'll do about four stitches I think this should be okay like so so that pinches it in the middle and we want to pinch in the opposite direction as well so making sure your stuffing's pushed down we're just going to go up to the top, or the bottom, and sew through that middle stitch as well. And then you want to come over to the opposite side, find roughly where the centre stitch is, and bring that in. So it kind of pinches that in as well. And then you want to secure that with a few stitches as well. Sure, that's nice. Make sure no stuffing's poking out either. It should be all tucked in. Secure that in place with a couple more stitches. Make sure that's nice and tight. Go back in the opposite direction. And then we just want to hide our tail end. So we're going to go in where our yarn is coming out and just come out on the body somewhere through a stitch. Doesn't matter where. That disappears on the inside. Then we're going to go over to somewhere else, come out for a stitch, doesn't matter where. And then that disappears on the inside. If you go back in where you came out, it disappears. And then we just push our project down gently, holding that in place. Trim as close as you can, and then when the project poke, um, when it project comes back up, <laughs> the uh, yarn end disappears on the inside. And there is your completed tulip. Simple as that, she says. So we can add that to the rest of our tulips and then we want to create our leaf to go with it as well, which also has a piece of wire running through the centre. Okay, so let me show you how to make the leaf. Okay, so for the leaf you want to take your green yarn, obviously, and we are going to chain 50 to begin. So we do our little slip knot, and using the same hook size as well. 
a little slip knot and we're going to chain 50 so 1, 2, 3, 4, 48, 49 and 50 so there we go, chain 50 to begin and just unravel them chain 50 and we're going to do a slip stitch in our second stitch from hook and our second stitch, we don't count the loop on our hook there's our first stitch, there's our second so putting your hook in that second stitch from hook we're going to do a slip stitch so bring the yarn through the chain then straight through the loop on your hook to do a slip stitch and we're going to do a slip stitch in the next four chains as well so go into the next chain and do a slip stitch go into the next chain and do a slip stitch go into the next chain and do a slip stitch then go into the next chain and do a slip stitch but when you work into your stitches it's important to just go under one bit of yarn for this because we want to work back into these chains again in the opposite direction so if we just go under one bit of yarn and we do that little slip stitch it makes the stitch easier to see on the way back so just try and go under one bit of yarn like I have so you've done a slip stitch in the first five there then we are going to do one single crochet in the next five so we go into the next stitch again just going under that one bit of yarn do a single crochet that's one the next chain two next chain three next chain four next chain five so you do one single crochet in the next five then we're going to do one half double crochet in the next two so half double crochet yarn over go into the next chain again just going onto that one bit of yarn and do half double crochet and we want a half double crochet in the next chain as well so do one half double crochet in the next two then we're going to do a double crochet in the next five so yarn over double crochet in the next five so next stitch one double crochet in the next stitch two double crochet in the next stitch three double crochet in the next stitch four double crochet in the next stitch five okay so one double crochet in the next five and then we're going to do one treble crochet in the next two and to do a treble we yarn over twice this time instead of once we yarn over twice go into the next stitch again just going onto that one bit of yarn bring the yarn through now any stitches that are bigger a double crochet or bigger in US terminology we pull through two and so we just get to one loop so we yarn over pull through two three loops yarn over pull through two loops yarn over pull for the last two and that does a treble we want to do another one of those in the next stitch so yarn over twice go into the next stitch bring the yarn through same again we pull for the first two loops pull for the next two loops pull for the last two loops let's do another treble so we've done one treble crochet in the next two and now we're going to do a double treble which is even bigger we're going to do that in the next 15 stitches as well so to do a double treble we yarn over three times so one two three okay so you yarn over three times and uh, don't put it too tight because it makes it hard to pull through just keep them loose but not so loose they fall off go into the next stitch and bring the yarn through so you end up with five loops and it's the same principle as the treble we just pull through two until we end up with our one loop so pull through the first two gives you four loops pull for the next two gives you three loops 
pull for the next two, last two loops, pull for the last two. And that does a double treble crochet. And we want to do that in the next 15, so that's one. So the next one, yarn over three times, one, two, three, wrap it round three times. Go into the next chain, bring it through. Same again, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. Okay, for another double treble. So that's our second one. One, two, three, yarn over three times and into the next chain. Bring the yarn through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. So all you need to remember with double crochets and bigger is you just pull through two until you end up with one loop. It's much easier to remember. So we need to do the next 15, isn't it? So we've done one, two, three, yarn over three times into the next one. Pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two for our fourth one. Wrap the yarn around three times and into the next one. Same again, pull through two, two, pull through two, pull through two. It's our fifth one, next one. Six. Next one. Oops, lost it a bit there. Seven. I find it easier when I pull through to twist my hook down and then up. So I'll show you on the next one. So I twist my hook down to come through the stitches and up. That makes it easier. Nine. Ten. I need 15 of these DTRs, double trebles. Eleven. Stitch. Oops, twelve. Fourteen, and the last one, fifteen. Pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull for the last two. So we've done one double treble crochet in the next. 15 stitches and then we're going to come back down to doing trebles so we're going to do one treble crochet in the next two so for a treble we just wrap it around twice just not not three times just twice one two and go into the next stitch and do a treble same thing again just pull through two till we get to the end so one treble in there and then a treble wrap around the arm around twice in the next stitch as well so one treble crochet in the next two, one, two. Then we're going to do one double crochet in the next five. So we just yarn over once in the next five. So double crochet in the next stitch, one, double crochet in the next stitch, two, double crochet in the next stitch, three, and double crochet in the next stitch. Four and a double crochet in the next stitch. Five. Okay, so one double crochet in the next five, 
and then we're going to do a half double crochet in the next two so a half double crochet in the next stitch pull full three half double crochet in the next stitch okay so you do one half double crochet in the next two then we do one single crochet in the next five so one And then that should leave you with just one chain on the end, and in there we're going to do a slip stitch in that last one. Okay, so there's one half of our leaf, that's one side of it. Now we just need to mirror that for the other side. And if you've just gone under that one bit of yarn when working into the chain, it should mean that you can still see these chains quite easily. So, what we want to do is turning our work clockwise, we're now going to work back along here again in the opposite direction and leave our little tail end out there so there's our first one which is technically the one the last one we just we slip stitched into so just skip that one and go on to the next one next chain and do single crochet okay so one single crochet and then a single crochet in the next chain single crochet in the next chain three single crochet in the next chain four single crochet in the next chain so we've mirrored the other side we've done one single crochet in the next five we skipped that first one where we did the slip stitch and then one single crochet in the next five which matches the five single crochet this side so then we do what do we do next? We do one half double crochet in the next stitch. Half double crochet. Okay, so you see those chains quite easily, you see. And a half double crochet in the next chain. That matches our two half double crochets this side. And then it was one double crochet in the next five. So do one double crochet in the next five this side. One. Two, three, just careful not to miss any, four, and five. So one double crochet in the next five, and then it was one treble crochet in the next two. For a treble, we wrap the yarn around twice. So one treble in the next stitch. Same again, we pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. Treble again in the next stitch. So wrap the arm around twice. One treble in the next stitch. Okay, so you've done one treble crochet in the next two, same as this side. Then we need to do 15 double treble crochets, okay? And to do that, we wrap the yarn around the hook three times, if you remember. So Go into the next stitch, the same again, we just pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two till you get to the end. So do one double treble crochet in the next 15, okay? Wrap the yarn around the yarn three times, it's around the hook. Next 15, so that's one, two, and last one, 15. Yarn around the hook three times and pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. So do one double treble crochet stitch in the next 15, and then we do one treble crochet in the next stitch to so wrap the yarn round your hook just twice, just twice. So treble in the next stitch, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, then a treble. In the next stitch. So one treble crochet in the next two and then we do one double crochet in the next five. Just double crochet, one, 
two, three, four, five. So one double crochet in the next five, same as the other side. One half double crochet in the next two, so a half double crochet in the next stitch, and a half double crochet in the next stitch, so one half double crochet in the next two, then one single crochet in the next five, single crochet, one, next stitch, two, three, Five, and then slip stitch in the remaining stitches so it should be five but get a little bit fiddly next five so one slip stitch next stitch two next stitch three next stitch four and the very last the fifth one push through do a slip stitch through there as well and there is your finished leaf so what we're going to do is which end did I do so that end I'm going to leave leave a long tail like that just going to do a similar thing to what we did for the tulip and just pull your yarn through like so and we're going to hide this tail end to begin I'm just going to hide that tail end get my yarn needle because this end is going to be the top where you've got all the slip stitches that's going to be at the bottom so it's going to be the top of our leaf where we just had the one slip stitch if you remember so I'm just going to hide this tail end just sew through a few stitches So, and then you can just trim the excess. That's all done. And what we're going to do for this end is we want a few more lengths of these bits again. So, what I'm going to do is getting the green yarn which has four on the floor. I'm going to take, it doesn't really matter how long, we're just going to take some lengths of about, about that much that we left, about the same. Double it over, okay. So take a length of yarn that's double the length of what you left, because we're going to fold them in half, you see, like so. We're going to do that about, about three times. Two, and another one, just roughly three. My yarn's falling on the floor again. <laughs> So we take these three lengths, like so, and they're going to be folded in half, but we'll take the ends, sew them onto your, thread them onto your yarn needle, all three of them, like so, and then taking the slip stitched end of your leaf, where you've got this long tail end, we're just going to sew through the end and bring all three through, and you want them bend in half okay so they're just looped on like that and you've got this nice thick length of all these yarn ends here then what we're going to do is we're going to get our another piece of this florist wire and starting at the other end what you want to do is just push it's a little bit fiddly at first because you don't really have much to work through just pushed through the holes and because we've worked through these stitches either side we've got like nice obvious holes hopefully and you want to just come through one and go to the back of the next one come for the next one get to the back just like this literally going in and out of these center chains concertina sort of effect threading your 
wire through the chains, the center chains. You want to do that all the way to the other end and it gets a little bit fiddly down by the slip stitches but just do the best you can. Okay. Okay, it's just coming up to the end. It gets a bit fiddly towards the end so I'm just going to just do the best I can just to get it to the bottom. There we go. And then you can just push your wire down to get this leaf at the top. Okay, like so. So when it's at the top, leave a tiny little gap. There we go. Just leave a tiny little length and then you just want to bend that over and out of the way. So just bend it back on itself. I usually get my jewellery making pliers out really. It'd be a lot easier. <laughs> there we go. Just bend that in so it's not sticking out like so. Okay, that will also stop the wire coming out as well. So there we go, there's our finished wire and then we do exactly the same thing again as we did on the tulip. We're going to take some florist tape and again take double the length of your stem. And this is, it doesn't actually stick this way like it would sellotape, it actually sticks in the opposite direction. I'm sure there's a reason for that because if you work in the flower industry I'm sure there's a reason for that. <laughs> I know nothing about flowers, florists work, all I know is they make them look so beautiful. We're going to do our best and we're just going to put that around on itself, keeping it tight and again try not to twist your leaf too much, just hide all the yarn pieces and the wire under the florist tape. Okay. So I'm going to do that and then I'll come back and be careful not to twist it like I just did. Okay. Okay, so there's our finished uh, stem. What I did is I had the yarn was actually longer, so I just trimmed it down. Then I wrapped the tape, leftover tape, back in the opposite direction. So, and it's nicely untwisted. And there we go, and then you can use this wire to bend the leaf and keep its shape. And then we can add that to our other leaves and our tulips. And there we go, some beautiful spring tulips to brighten up your room. So there we go, and I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. hope it's inspired you to create some flowers. And um, yeah, I will see you soon for some more crochet fun. Thanks for watching, guys.